Now, I wonder next year, I wonder if Diana Cantor, the wife of the great Eric Cantor, I wonder if next year, now that Eric Cantor no longer will be one of the most powerful people in Congress, I wonder if the wife of Eric Cantor will still remain on the board of directors of each of these companies and receive a six-figure salary or more from each of these companies next year and then the years to follow. Revlon, Domino's Pizza, Media General, Universal Corp., Edelman Financial, and of course the Virginia Retirement Savings Plan. Because I'm sure that the reason that they had her on the board of directors was for her wonderful insight, guidance, and you know just knowledge that she brings to the table. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that her husband was one of the most powerful Republicans in the House. I'm sure that's had nothing to do with why they had her on the board of directors. And I also am curious how next year and then the years following, I wonder how well the Hudson James Group, that's a strategic advisory firm that was founded by Mrs. Cantor, which provides consulting services in between the public and private sectors. It brings them together. So what does that mean? Hey, if you want this government contract, you have to hire this consulting company. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. Hello. How are you? Welcome. I am the Young Republican, Jeff Harbaugh. You can follow me on Twitter at G-Off Young Repub. That's G-E-O-F-F Young Repub. And I, I don't know what we're going to do as a party now that we have lost the great Eric Cantor. I can't believe the media today. Isn't it funny how MSNBC that supposedly hated this guy? Remember, they could never stand him. Whenever there was a deal, it was always Eric Cantor and the Republicans. They're stopping Obama. They're this crazy fringe of the right. So now the guy loses in a primary. You would think he would be happy. That would be the equivalent of Harry Reid tomorrow losing in a primary or ended up being committed to a mental hospital, one of the two. Uh, the second one probably is more likely. But Harry Reid being thrown out of the Senate and Republicans being upset and say, I don't know what you guys are doing here. This is just kind of crazy. I mean, I, I never understood either what the benefit was. And I'm going to have more on Eric Cantor and exactly how he got himself into power and why I think it's a great thing that he's gone. But I could never understand why you put up with this from Eric Cantor. And, well, you might have the argument, well, the guy's a great speaker. He goes on television programs, radio programs. He's great in conveying the message. Not at all. He's a horrible speaker. In fact, he's not even likable. I mean, as a Republican, you look at the guy, after 20 seconds, you can't stand him. You think maybe he has a lot of name recognition that brings people into the party. No. Maybe he's a guy that behind closed doors... He's just hammering out deals with Democrats. He's tough on them. None of that. Eric Cantor doesn't do any of that. So I never understood what the benefit was of having him in the leadership. And then, oh, now we're supposed to think today, this was a big mistake for the Republicans. This was a, a terrible idea. What are you, nuts? It's great that Eric Cantor is gone. And I never could stand Eric Cantor, especially the last couple of years. And the reason I could not stand him and this is the reason I believe that he was primaried. It wasn't just immigration. Immigration played a role into it. But Eric Cantor is what a lot of people are starting to become in both parties. And it's 10 times worse in the Democrat Party. But Eric Cantor, he's not a Republican. He's not a Tea Party guy. He's not a rhino. He's not a conservative. He's not a closet liberal, like even some people on the right have thought for the last couple of years. He's a typical lying, fraud, two-faced politician that'll do whatever he has to do. He will say whatever he has to say. He'll make a deal with whoever he has to make a deal with to be able to empower himself, to give himself more power, and elevate Eric Cantor. That's all he is. I have no idea what the guy believes in. I don't. Politically, I have no clue. And the real reason I believe that he was primaried is because people see right through him. And let me give you a little bit about the background of Eric and Diana Cantor. And this, to me, it shows exactly what they are about, and it shows exactly the lying, two-faced fraud that Eric Cantor is. And then I'll get into some of the shady things that he tried to do with this primary, too, to uh, be able to tear down his opponent. And the first thing is you have to understand the financials, that Eric Cantor, when he was uh, elected to Congress in 2001, 
He was worth about a million bucks. Now, he had never done anything in his life before that in the private sector. He had only worked in uh, the Virginia House. So he's in Virginia government for about 10 years. And, well, excuse me, he worked for, you ready for this? He, he does have private sector experience. Now, he worked for, he says, for a decade, and the time doesn't even make sense because it was in college and while he was in government in Virginia. But he says he worked for his father's real estate firm. Now, I don't have a problem with that. There's plenty of people that work in the family business. This is what I thought was the best. And all of a sudden, it was never talked about before until there was a criticism that Eric Cantor's never been in the private sector business. But are you ready for this, for what he did for his uh, father's real estate firm? He was a consultant. A consultant. So I don't know about you, but how many people do you know who would hire your son who has never worked in the line of work that you're in to be a consultant? I, I, I've always found that very entertaining about Eric Cantor, that he was a consultant for his father's real estate firm. But anyway, he's worth about a million bucks, and on a congressman's salary – in 2005, he's worth about $2 million. This is when he starts to move up in the ranks and starts to make his own deals and starts to get more power in the Republican Party. Then he becomes the deputy whip. And in 2005, this is when Domino's brings him on to the board of directors. Now, I just want to say this. This is not a knock on Domino's. Unlike a lot of the companies, I would say maybe it's two-thirds of the companies that are given tons of money to political parties – it's they want something for nothing. They want to get an inflated contract. I don't believe that about Domino's because I don't believe that you can be in big business today in America without having some of these people in government on your side. So this isn't a knock on Domino's. I don't think all of a sudden they want to sell pizzas to the government and they're trying to get some contract. But Domino's names Diana Cantor to the board of directors. Now, why would Domino's Pizza want a woman, Diana Cantor, who has not worked in the private sector. She hasn't had any position at all except for being on the board of directors since 1990. And at that time, she from 86 to 90, she worked for Goldman Sachs. Why would Domino's Pizza say, you know what? This would be someone that would be great for the board of directors. She hasn't worked in 16 years. When she did, it was in the finance industry, a totally different industry. Let's bring her on. Don't you think that has something to do with the fact that her husband was Eric Cantor? an up-and-coming congressman in the Republican Party. And it doesn't just stop with Domino's. Now, Domino's was very lucrative for them. With the stock options, they made $3 million alone out of Domino's. And I went down the list of the other companies that Diana Cantor is the, on the board of directors now. Revlon, I have no idea why they would need a woman that has not worked in 16 years. And it was the finance industry on the board of directors, but Revlon does. Domino's Pizza, Media General, that's a media company. Coincidentally enough, too, they happen to own the two hometown newspapers in Richmond, in Eric Cantor's district. Happened to be a newspaper, too, that the day after the primary actually um, was still ripping and ridiculing Eric Cantor's opponent. That's a shocker. And Universal Corp., that's the largest tobacco retailer in the world. You can see why they would really need someone that hasn't worked in 16 years, and when they did, it was in the finance industry. Edelman Financial. My favorite, the Virginia Retirement Savings and Loan. And then the best part, too, is the Hudson James Group that she founded, which was a consulting firm that brought public sectors and private sectors together. Now, I haven't looked into that enough, but in my opinion, I'm sure there was uh, probably some questionable deals at best in that. So when you look at what happened last night and you see the great Eric Cantor, who goes into Congress worth a million bucks, he's worth $2 million in 2005, he climbs his way up in leadership. Now, all of a sudden, he's worth about $14 million. Isn't that kind of odd? Isn't that kind of odd? So now you see exactly what the real Eric Cantor is. And, oh, my God, I love it, too. Yeah, what are we going to do without Eric Cantor now? I can't believe the media today. It just shows exactly how much of frauds the media is. They love to always talk about before, oh, Eric Cantor and the Republicans, Eric Cantor and the fringe of the right. And now he gets primaried. They should be thrilled. And look. Look at their reaction. Take a look at the reaction. Because Eric Cantor is just like them. He'll make deals. He'll do whatever he has to do to be able to empower himself. And there's no room for, in any party, of, of politicians like this right now. There's no, there's no room at all. It's too out of control. Everything's too out of control. 
The spending's way out of control. The debt's way out of control. And you think Eric Cantor's going to fix it? The guy who throws his wife every week at a new board of directors? What do you think they're doing that for? Because she has wonderful insight? So these are the type of politicians, and funny, another career politician, that have to go. And it's a great thing. Jeff Harbaugh, the Young Republican, back after this. (laughs) 